So as consumers, we all look for certain benefits when we go out to purchase and for that benefit we are required to pay a price. So the benefit that we are looking to acquire from the price that we are paying gives us satisfaction and that is basically how all the transactions in the world work. So how exactly do we go about making a purchase of a particular commodity when it comes to understanding the consumer's behavior here? So as we know, we are measuring our satisfaction in terms of utils. So here in this particular model, we are going to say that we are not buying exactly commodities, but whatever we are paying for a commodity is giving us in return utils. So we are actually buying utils for whatever payment we are making. And utils are required to be measured, but to measure these Utils, is there a physical calculator available? The answer to the question is no. Utils is nothing but a perceived value of satisfaction that a consumer gives to particular commodity. So, utils is there on one hand and on the other hand you have the currency that you are required to pay. How do you strike a balance between the two? Now, let us say you are going to purchase a commodity X which gives you four utils of satisfaction and you are required to pay 1 rupees for it. Now how do you strike a balance? And we know to get to consumer's equilibrium or to any equilibrium you would need certain balance. But over here do you find any balance? There is 4 on one side and on the other side you have 1. So clearly you see that there is no balance in terms of, in terms of the numbers. Also there is a distinct uh, thing going on over here which is that one of the side has measurement in terms of utils whereas the other one is in terms of rupees so it is utils versus rupees so to measure or to compare these two things we must find a common ground and that common ground comes from the concept of marginal utility of money because marginal utility of money talks about what exactly can you buy with the rupee or with the unit of money that you have in terms of utils? So what we are over here going to do is, we are now going to convert this marginal utility of product X into the marginal utility of money. So not into the marginal utility of money, but we are going to divide this marginal utility of commodity X with marginal utility of money. So what will happen is, you will get your answer now in terms of Rupees. So the common denomination problem would be solved here by making sure that you divide marginal utility of the product with marginal utility of money. Now let's go, go on with the same example. So you were getting four utils from the commodity that you were looking to consume. And let us assume over here that marginal utility of money is also four utils, right? And the price that you are paying in the market is 1 rupees. So now what happens? What is the benefit that you are getting over here? It is equal to 1 rupee. And how much you are paying for it? It is again equal to 1 rupee. And this is exactly what the consumer is looking for. He wants to make sure that whatever money he is spending in the market, he is getting an exact value for it. And this is pretty much the consumer's equilibrium. Now let us try and understand this in more depth and by understanding what exactly does Marshall's model stand for. So, first of all, let us be very clear on this thing that this model is known as the cardinal approach or the cardinal model for the simplest reason that the utility is being measured in terms of cardinal numbers. And there are two possible cases. One is in the case of a single commodity and the other one is for more than one commodity, which we will discuss in another video. But this video talks about the single commodity case. And there are two conditions for consumer equilibrium, which are required to be met, out of which the first one is that marginal utility in terms of money must equal the price of that commodity. And second one is that the total gain must fall after the equilibrium, which we will be discussing with the help of an example. But I hope by now, you are clear with the first condition. Let's, let's take another example to make sure that we understand this better. So, 
you are again consuming a commodity X and you are getting 8 utils and the marginal utility of money that is the capacity of money to get you to utils or purchase utils is let us say 2 utils here so you get 4 utils out of your consumption and let us say the price that you were paying was also 4 rupees here so what exactly is happening is the condition one satisfied the answer is yes it is satisfied because the marginal utility in terms of money over here is equal to the price that you are paying okay let me take one more example let us say the marginal utility of money equals six utils and commodity x gives you 12 utils whereas your price of this particular commodity is 4 rupees now are you satisfied let's find out so it is basically 12 by 6 equals 4 and this is 2 equals 4 so what is happening over here consumer perceives that he is paying more for the benefit that he is getting so he is getting benefit equal to rupees 2 whereas he is required to pay rupees 4 now in this case would the consumer continue the consumption of this commodity the answer is no for the simplest reason that he is not getting the worth of what he is paying or let us now understand this through a complete tableau representation which requires you to first of all assume certain values so over here we are taking commodity x as an example the price for commodity x is 2 rupees and marginal utility of money is also given as 2 utils right and over here we are now going to bring a change and we are going to make sure that we now discuss about continuous consumption right so over here instead of just talking about one unit at a time we are going to talk about multiple units at one single time so where exactly will the consumers equilibrium be met if you are to consume more than one unit of the same commodity so the very first unit gives you 10 utils, second one gives you 8, third 6 and so on. Whereas you see you are required to as I explained it earlier convert marginal utility of the commodity to marginal utility of money. So that you have common denominator or at least you have got a common background to compare the two. So what we are going to over here do is we are going to convert marginal utility of x in marginal utility of money and to do so what you do is you divide mux by mum so by doing so this is the result that you get so marginal utility of money in this case is nothing but 2 so you need to divide each of these numbers with 2 to arrive to figures of 5 4 3 2 1 0 minus 2 now let's start comparing what is the satisfaction that you are getting for the money that you are paying so all throughout you are paying the same amount of money that's because price of commodity X is not changing it is same for every unit that you are consuming however the utility derived from consumption of each successive unit is declining and that is because of the law of diminishing marginal utility which we had discussed in the previous video so what is happening when you are consuming the very first unit you are paying two rupees but how much is the benefit that you are getting it is equal to five rupees that's because the first unit gave you utils of 10 we divided it with marginal utility of money which is two and that's how we came on to five so five and two so are we getting any kind of benefit yes what is five minus two it's three so the benefit is of three rupees so that means consumer thinks that he is paying 2 rupees but the benefit that he is getting equals 5 rupees and therefore he feels that there is a gain of 3 rupees and th in this particular case he would like to increase consumption 
and as he increases consumption to the second unit, what happens? His marginal utility is bound to decline because of law of diminishing marginal utility. But is he still making a gain? The answer is yes, there is still a gain. And there is a gain for the third unit as well. One. But what happens when he consumes the fourth unit? When he consumes the fourth unit, the gain becomes equal to zero. So that means over here, consumer says that whatever money I am paying for this fourth unit is giving me satisfaction equal to what I am paying for. The commodity X is giving him two utils of satisfaction or it is giving him the satisfaction equal to two rupees and that is exactly the amount that he is paying. Therefore, there is no additional gain here. And over here, what is happening is that your MUX by MUM equals PX, which is the very first condition. And is this the equilibrium? The answer to the question is, yes, it is the equilibrium. Because over here, he is getting the exact worth for what he is paying. Now, you can very well challenge this condition and say that if I am to continue to consume, then what will happen? So, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, 0 minus 2 is minus 2. And what is happening over here? The gain is becoming negative. And why is that happening? Because he has already had equilibrium. And therefore, condition 1 over here is satisfied. Over here, he will not increase his consumption because MUX in terms of money is less than price of X. Whereas in the previous condition, before meeting equilibrium, he would continue to consume till the fourth unit because his marginal utility of X divided with marginal utility of money was greater than the price of X. Therefore, he continued consuming more. So, this tells us that for consumer to be in equilibrium for the same commodity, he must equate his marginal utility in terms of money to the price that he is paying for. As long as he pays the price, he desires satisfaction. And if he is getting more satisfaction for what he is paying, he continues consumption. But as soon as he gets to his equilibrium, he does not want to further continue his consumption. Because by doing so, his marginal utility in terms of X, in terms of money, sorry, is less than the price of X. Which brings us to answer the second condition. Total gain must fall after the equilibrium. So, what is happening to the total gain here? So, before equilibrium, it is 3 plus 2, 5, 5 plus 1, 6, plus 0, it is 6 here. And over here, you have got your equilibrium, where 2 was equal to 2 and your gain was equal to 0. If you are to now continue calculating gain, then this is reducing. This becomes 5, this becomes 3, and so on. So, Condition number 2 is also satisfied. Over here, you need to make sure that total gain is falling after you have achieved your equilibrium. So, the two other conditions are sometimes questioned in examinations in terms of true or false or baby MCQs. And even if you are required to give full explanation of why is consumer getting equilibrium at the fourth unit or at any unit as for the measurements given to you, you must continue to give explanation for the two other conditions because if you are saying MUX by MUM equals PX and that is the equilibrium, then you must justify why the other conditions are not giving you exact equilibrium. So, in this case where marginal utility in terms of money is less than price of X, consumer will decline the consumption. And therefore, he will ultimately reach to the condition where MUX by MUM would equal P of X. 
and similarly for the other condition which is the condition number two where he was getting more than what he was paying where marginal utility in terms of money was greater than price of x he would increase the consumption but he would only increase it till mux by mum becomes equal to p of x now this can also be understood with the help of a diagram and over here the diagram is quite simple you would understand this that he gets to equilibrium at point e and this is the point where his mux in terms of mum equals p of x and other conditions where quantity 1 and quantity 2 would not give him the same level or the maximum level of satisfaction therefore he will not continue to be in equilibrium at q1 or at q2 he is in equilibrium at q so if there is any question regarding the very model or any suggestions for us to improve the productivity for students let us know thank you for watching this video